ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, got a little bit of art. Uh oh, got two things going on. Hold on, y'all. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the call I just had was from a gentleman who was, he had this lady, and this particular lady just went to sign her documents before the uh, realtor and the notary. And so she went through the documents, she read through the documents, she signed the warranty deed, and she signed the mortgage. And she took the warranty deed with her, and she left the mortgage, and she took off, and they were chasing her around the parking lot, trying to get the documents back from her. You, you can't, because we have an agreement. I just signed the agreement. I, I'm sorry, what I didn't do is I didn't hang up. Uh, I just signed the agreement. You can't do nothing, okay? You're on stupid, you're on crack street. You can't do nothing. You have no authority. Well, I'm sorry, I'm modding my phone again because I put on a different ROM and it turns out that ROM is not compatible with my phone. So that's what happens when you are modifying a phone and it's my phone. I've had it for a while and I only use this phone for recording. I have a lot of documents that I've written and I wanna put in recording for my benefit. And so that's what I'm, oh, didn't want to do that one. It's the same thing, so I guess I'll leave it the way it is. It's the same thing. So let's see if it works, y'all. Y'all get to see. It says it's booting, recovery, system. Okay, then that means it's going to work. So let me just go ahead, and it's going to just remod my phone. Okay, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, she did right, even though... Initially, the person thought she made a mistake because she just got up and took off because he said she misunderstood what he was trying to tell her. But by signing the note only, the mortgage, and signing, I mean, taking a warranty deed and not signing anything else, no power of attorney, there is no law that requires you to sign a power of attorney. The note is only a promise to pay the loan back. You've already got the loan. That's why the docs are there. Once you sign that, you're agreeing to that loan. They're saying they've lent you that money. And there you go. But they, they won't give you funding. No, it's not a matter of funding. Now it's a matter of truth and lending because you fulfilled your end of the obligation. You made an application for a loan. There is no way in the world you have to promise to surrender your rights. You do not have to waive your rights. Anytime somebody tells you that you waive your rights, if you do this, just say, I elect not to waive my rights. Well, but if you don't waive your rights and you can't have this, you can't have that. Wait, you are you saying that I have to waive my rights to receive this? Oh, then you're saying this is a benefit, then I don't have a right. So if I have to waive my rights, this is not a right, this is a benefit. Anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, there are a couple of things. I wasn't gonna do this video. Let me take uh, Jennifer Hudson and Nayo and I like this song a lot, as you all can tell. Give me a second. I'm going to have to pause y'all. And there's a reason why I got to pause y'all because I got to make sure I don't reveal no personal information to nobody's. So hold on. Okay. I apologize for that. Two things. Let you guys know that modding a phone is not that hard. YouTube has videos all the time. You see it was successful. It completely modded. It did what it was supposed to do. Okay. Now, technically I'm supposed to unplug it and do some things and I am unplugging it from the computer it's stalling system updates I don't want it to install system updates because I need to do some things in the mint's time so while it's doing that as soon as it gets ready to restart I have to pull the battery like now because it wants to restart and I don't want it to restart can't have it restarting so what I am doing now is I am entering what's called recovery mode Mommy! Mommy! Okay, so I'm entering recovery mode and I have to put in what's called a recovery um, image so that I'm able to change certain things on the phone. Anyway, enough about that. You didn't come here for that. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm doing now is I'm writing a letter. This is going to the FCC, 
no, the FTC, the SEC, Federal Trade Commission and the Security Exchange Commission, and the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau, CFPB, okay? I'm showing this to you because, no, I'm not going to post this up. Sorry, some of you guys, you're just going to have to do the work yourself, okay? Because I, this is one letter that I said I was going to complete today, and this stuff takes me hours to do. I don't just put together a letter in five minutes because there's a matter of thinking. I'm not even finished with this yet. I won't be finished with this until sometime tomorrow morning or more early tomorrow afternoon. That's why I said tomorrow afternoon. Okay? Till night. This is cool in the gang, ladies and gentlemen. This is your night. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, government obligations, mortgage default insurance, and mortgage-backed securities. That's what this is about. Now, this is only going to be about, this says three pages now, but it's only going to be two pages when I get finished. I don't want to overwhelm them. And that's why I say, keep it simple, stupid. You don't want to give them too much information because they get that glass eye. And there was this guy, his name was Juan. Juan Carlos, actually, is what they called him. We, we called him CJ. Juan Carlos, J, Juan J. Carlos, CJ. And CJ was a youngster. I think CJ was about 22 years old, and this was about 2013. So at five years, he's 27 now. Ladies and gentlemen, this this kid, this this kid was an idiot to me. No, CJ was an alright person. There was nothing wrong with CJ. It's just he was an idiot. Now, what I mean by idiot. I, when I say idiot, I don't want anybody to misunderstand me when I use the term idiot. I don't mean it's not derogatory when I use it. When I use the term idiot, I'm saying that this person is completely devoid of reality as far as I'm concerned. But as far as everybody else is concerned, CJ is an all right person. That's why I said, that's why I qualified it by saying CJ is an all right person. CJ is an all right person in day to day. But when it comes to processing information, thinking and doing anything of any benefit, CJ is lost. So I'm sitting up there explaining to CJ what he needs to do with his case because he's looking at at least 15 years. And I'm telling him what he needs to bring up to get that completely down. Now, most of the people I worked with, they were most of them were looking at 10 to 15 years. Many of them got less than five. It was just a matter of putting paperwork in and telling them we're putting this before the court. They hadn't experienced the raft of me before. Okay, so 37 people got getting their sentences reduced. Three people getting out of jail. I consider that to be not bad considering everybody in there. <laughs> oh, they deserve to be in there. Most of the people in there had actually done something wrong. But as I told them, I need to see the police report. I need to see the police report. I need you to tell me what happened the day you were arrested. Anything else, I don't care. It doesn't matter. Ladies and gentlemen, there are a couple of things we're going to talk about. This video is not going to be long. Here's the thing. When you're looking at a, a case, a criminal case, the only thing you're concerned about is the police report. Why? Because the police make a lot of mistakes because they're idiots. Now, see, when I talk about police officers, for the most part, police officers are idiots. Now, I'm not being derogatory when I call a police officer an idiot. Why? Because they are followers. They are told what to do, and they just do what they're told. Okay, that means they don't have to think for themselves. But then you do have police officers out there thinking for themselves and taking people's lives, like the young man in Sacramento. Okay, you have this happening all the time. Again, thus the word idiot. Anytime you're on a job and it's a thinkless job and then you get in trouble because you thought for yourself, then you understand you're an idiot. Why? You're an idiot for taking a job for which you don't have to think and then when you do think, you get in trouble. Now, mind you, if you have somebody's life in your hand and you are carrying a gun and you take somebody's life and you thought, well, I thought he had a gun, mama. I, I did, mama. It just, it looked like a gun. I mean, it, it, it was black and it was dark, but 
but it looked like a gun. It only turned out it was just his hand. He was just trying to put his hands up. But he pulled him up backwards. He didn't put him up forward. So I just saw black and I thought gun. And I'm like, pop, 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 pop. 19 times I did that, mama. And the other officers, they did another 110 times. So it was 129 times we shot him. But that was only because, you know, we were thinking for ourselves at that moment. It happens all the time, people. And I'm sorry that that's the case. Now look, let's make sure we understand this. I know police officers. I've met some pretty fine police officers. I mean, really upstanding individuals. They care about people. They will risk their lives for people like the one in France who risked his life to go in there to trade himself for a hostage. If you want to call people like that heroes, hey, give them the credit. Risking their lives? No, they deserve that credit. I'm not talking about them. Those are the good ones. Those are the ones that we all should be appreciative of. They're not out there trying to hurt anybody. They're actually out there being selfless. Anytime somebody is selfless, we should appreciate that. You all should appreciate that. So stop talking about all police officers being bad. A couple of them, yes, are idiots, morons, don't deserve to have the title, the job. Okay, hold on. When I use the word idiot that time, I mean really idiots. Some of them are idiots. And they know it. They even talk about each other. They will tell you, oh, he's an idiot. Just like Sessions and uh, Mr. Uh, Tillerson <laughs> calling Donald Trump a moron. How dare you speak the truth like that, Tillerson? What's wrong with you? Okay? They talk about each other because they see it. Well, let's get back to this. Ladies and gentlemen, to make this story short, the woman who had her property, who went ahead and signed the papers, who got the house, they said they were gonna contest it. Guess what they couldn't do? The county recorder said, well, you can't contest it. You guys are the ones who issued the document. Are you saying this is a fraudulent document? Because then they, they would be in a lot of trouble if they said it was a fraudulent document. She put them in a position that they couldn't handle. She just shook the system. There is no law that says, and by the way, once they place those documents in front of you, they're yours. They're not theirs. Those are your documents. They're called your long docs. So she was completely within her right and nobody could make her, not even the police could come there and make her give the document back. Doesn't matter what they explain. I'm sorry, they have my name on it. Yes, I produced them, see? It says I, see right there? It's an affidavit, this is mine. It's not theirs. Our agreement is final. Our agreement is finished. Now they can renege on the agreement, but I don't think they wanna do that because they renege on that agreement. And this will be one of the most unique lawsuits in the country. And then all the secrets of the organization will come out in this lawsuit. They don't wanna do that. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Let's see if we can narrow some things down for you. I got an email today and I have to take the person at his word because these were his words. Now, hold on. I cannot say that this is gonna happen in every situation. So please don't even go there. Sorry, some of you are gonna try to go there. Last year we reported that someone had a problem with the police, got a ticket and they filed their affidavit just a basic affidavit we had online at satcom they filed that into the case and the case got dismissed but i told people back then when i did the video explaining that i said well they let some of the cases go and then other cases they just dismissed them and other cases they let go through it's a hit and miss thing well a young man was driving his car and while he's driving his car the police pull up behind him and they have conversations. This goes that way, that goes that way. It all went sideways. They arrest him. And when they arrested him, they impounded his car. He stayed in jail for four days. But in the time, he filed his 
affidavit. No, 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 no. Not the one you guys have online. No, he's a SATCOM member. He filed the affidavit we do for our people. And after he filed the document, he's being released. Can't tell you the time period between him giving them the document and him being released, but he's being released without papers, without signing anything. They literally just released him. No release papers, no nothing, just released him. Now he's working on acquiring his automobile back. But ladies and gentlemen, we would not be producing that document if we didn't think that it had the ability of doing what it's supposed to do, what, what it says inside. Now, we're not saying that everybody should go and get that document. Everybody should become SATPAT members. No, we're not saying that. I'm just letting you know that there have been some significant successes throughout all of this with people doing things because they knew they had the right to do certain things like that woman just signing that paper, taking her warranty deed, and she headed right to the county recorder. It turns out the bank already had somebody at the county recorder. Why? Because the moment she would have signed those papers, they would have been following that lien on the record. This is what they do. So she was filing her warranty deed on the record ahead of the bank. Now, they, she didn't sign over power of attorney and uh, the lien uh, waiver of rights to the property if she defaulted. She didn't sign the waivers. So they don't have that to use against her. Okay, remember, she doesn't owe any money. She signed a mortgage doc allowing them to trade the property on the market. Remember, the loan was not for the home. So she had every right to take her warranty deed because she got the loan for what? Personal loan. The warranty deed is because she allowed the bank to act as power of attorney in securing the property, which they agreed to. Okay, they agreed. Well, guess what? She filed her warranty deed. She owns the property, but the problem is they don't have any document that they can bring into court saying they have a right to foreclose on her in the future unless they fail to trade it on the market. And if they don't trade it on the market, she doesn't owe them anything. That's if she understands that. Okay, that is that for that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I spoke with one other person. Uh, not spoke with, I ended up getting an email from this person. And... I had spoken, I had gotten an email from this person before. She was giving us some heads up about certain things that we were doing research on, but she had also given us a heads up on the fact that they have used the hour style money orders and have successfully paid off five to seven automobiles. She didn't give an exact number, but she did emphasize five to seven automobiles. Said that she has successfully used her and the group that she's with the 445 form to pay off liens, to pay off bank debts, 445 form. She said one of them was $19,000. Okay. So what I'm trying to tell you guys is I cannot, like one guy called me up today and he was asking me, uh, what's the address for the rural development finance director, uh, fiscal services office in Louisiana. I told him, that's not my job to do that research for you and have that information handy and to be able to read it out to you whenever you call me. That's not what my number is up there for. I ended up talking to him for about 35 minutes. I gave him my time because I had myself inside of a Walmart returning some items. And I figured while I'm there, while I'm even talking to the cashier, I gave him my time. That's not going to happen with the rest of you. But I decided to give that young man my time. And I gave him a lot of it. What I'm going to say right now so that all of you get it, because you guys hear me talk about it all the time, Invo, you're never going to get it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not here to figure out everything for you. I'm here to give you information that you only knew part of it and you needed to know just a little bit more. I had one other person who emailed me and told me that he introduced a couple of people to me, older people told them to take a listen to the videos. 
He said that the individuals contacted him back and saw, uh, actually spoke about how much I filled in the blanks of things that they already knew. They just didn't have those other pieces. I told you guys, that's what I do. I have those details that even the so-called veterans have been around for a long time didn't have. Again, I don't study this stuff. I have a relationship with my God and I asked him for certain information. You guys are my witness that that's what he has done, that he has answered my request. So I don't need people telling me that the God I serve is not the true God or anything like, Psh, please, I have evidence. I have people documenting the fact that that is the case, that he is the true God and he is providing this and he is providing that. So na 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 na. Anyway, let me go on with this letter because you guys, this letter is going to be important because those of you who are dealing with mortgages, those of you who are dealing with any type of, what's the word, uh, stupidity with the banks, what you don't realize is that you need to, need, need, need to contact the SEC, Securities Exchange Commission, the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, and the CFPB. Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. What you must do is you must file a complaint to whom it may concern. Let's see. Let's see, because I got to rewrite this, but I want you to see the gist of it, okay? No, as a matter of fact, I'm going to put y'all on pause. We're going to turn off our Curtis Mayfield right now. Thank you, Curtis, and your ghetto child running wild, okay? We're going to turn off Curtis Mayfield. Ladies and gentlemen, that's somebody texting me, emailing me or something, but I'm going to put y'all on pause. Hold on a second. We're going to do two things here, y'all. So I want y'all to pay attention to what's going on, like Marvin Gaye would say. We're going to do this right here. Re, government obligation, mortgage default insurance, and mortgage-backed securities. March 28th. 2018. To whom it may concern. We are in receipt of documentation from your organizations claiming to somehow have a vested interest in the property located at TGDFHJGFDDFGHJKLKJHGFDSXCVBNJKJHGFDCVBNMKJHGF. Please be advised that any and all future communication regarding this property must be sent to this address via USPS with no variations or deviations from the aforementioned format. No other forms of communication will be permitted and slash or is acceptable. In 1933 by an act of Congress, March 9, 1933 Act known as the Emergency Banking Economic Relief Act, it was determined that all property in the United States is owned by the government, that individual so-called ownership was only by allotment. Congress also determined that all mortgages in the United States were deemed to be government obligations, which come with the guarantee of the United States full faith and credit. By operation of law the Federal Reserve and their member banks are permitted to act as middlemen so to speak for the United States government, by completing the property paperwork that is loan docs, and then forwarding those documents to the United States Treasury of the United States Treasury window for credit. The United States government not only guarantees these mortgages that is government obligations, but they have gone one step further, they required insurance on all conventional mortgages in the United States. My properties were insured, I paid the premiums, I paid the insurance premiums and yet I have been defrauded. There has been an active engagement in constructive fraud by the mortgage insurance company and the financial institution and the United States government against myself as a consumer. The consumer protection laws are there to assist individuals such as myself when we are harmed as a result of unscrupulous activities. The mortgage on my loan was not on my home, the mortgage was on the loan the lien was on the home. I believe based on the aforementioned laws that the financial institutions have been duly compensated, in fact our agreement was that the home was not collateral for a loan that is I used the loan to acquire a home, and until I acquired the home that was not mine to collateralize, meaning that I could never place something I do not have the ownership rights over as collateral. The mortgage-backed security agreement permitted and slash or allowed the financial institution to trade my property on the market in lieu of payment for the loan. Because the stock market investments are construed as a risk, I agree to allow my home to be used as collateral in place should the financial institution not receive the benefits of such a transaction on the market. I forwarded my interest that was due me as a result of my being a trust interest holder and an investor and that mortgage-backed security, so that those receipts would be applied to the balance of the account, this has not happened. 
I also have been giving information that the financial institution has received tax credits and other benefits as a result of charging off the account, yet those credits and or adjustments have not been applied to the account as is cognizable under general accounting procedure. The failure on the part of the financial institution and or the securitization trustee to keep accurate accounting has resulted in my being harmed, and I hereby protest such actions and slash or interactions as a result of it being a violation of my due process rights. The financial institution was asked to give a complete comprehensive accounting, I am by law entitled to a complete comprehensive accounting, they have refused to supply. I have tendered payment on at least three different occasions, and have yet to have the account credited but they, the financial institution and securitization trustee by and slash or through it slash their agents, have placed knowing, false, misleading, misrepresentative information on the public record defaming me, libeling me, and slandering my reputation, causing myself injury as a consumer, and I do hereby bring forth this complaint. We thank you for your time and look forward to your providing the information requested within the next 30 calendar days from the date of receipt of this presentment and slash or sooner as required or acknowledged by applicable statute. Eon. Ladies and gentlemen, gents and ladies, ladies and gents. Again, this information was being provided here for your benefit, for you to bring a claim. Remember, if you pay attention, the word consumer is mentioned throughout this because you want to come in as a consumer because the consumer laws protect you. Now, if you see, it was only two pages. The other ones are just addresses. Okay, that's where we do the CC. So it's only two pages. Like I told you, it was going to be less than three pages, definitely. And I still have to spruce this up. I played this so that you all can hear this, so that you can all, all can hear the argument. And this is what I'm working on now. This is what I need to work on. This is what I must work on. But while I'm doing it, I made a promise to myself that I was going to share this information with you. Okay, not this information, but this information with you. I hope you find this information helpful and I hope you find it beneficial. And I want to say in less than 30 minutes, I hope I gave you something worthwhile. Take care of yourselves. Have a good day. Have a good night. I'm about to go get me some good rest. Adios, people.